The five circumstantial advantages. A Buddha has appeared. The Buddha has preached the Dharma. The Dharma still exists in the world. The Dharma can still be followed and being accepted by a qualified teacher. This is discussed from an external perspective. If any of these five conditions were absent, we wouldn't be able to sit here today listening to the Dharma, would we? If the Buddha didn't teach or didn't appear, how would the Dharma be passed down? That would be impossible. As Nagarjuna said, a Buddha has appeared and preached the Dharma. His teachings still exist and can be followed. There are Dharma teachers who compassionately benefit sentient beings. Number one, a Buddha has appeared, the advantage of a perfect teacher. If one is born in a dark kalpa in which no Buddha appears, they wouldn't even hear of words like Guru, the Three Jewels, the Four Noble Truths, and the Twelve Links of Dependent Origination. But now we are in a kalpa in which the Buddha has appeared, so we have the advantage of a perfect teacher. In some kalpas, there is no Buddha appearing at all. In our good kalpa, there are 1,000 Buddhas appearing. In dark kalpas, no Buddha appears at all. During that period, no one attains liberation and all beings remain trapped in samsara. In the following, we will analyse how rare it is for a Buddha to come to the world by checking the situation in the past, present and future. Some people may think it's easy for a Buddha to appear, but in reality it's not that easy. Humans are like this. They don't realise their blessings when they are surrounded by blessings, and they don't appreciate what they have. If you were born in a kalpa without a Buddha appearing, you would be lost in ignorance, not knowing about the Dharma and its preciousness. The Lotus Sutra says, It is rare and hard to encounter a Buddha coming to the world. Rare means it takes a very long time. The Mahaparinirvana Sutra also states, First, it is difficult for a Buddha to appear. Second, it is difficult to obtain a human body. In countless kalpas, each kalpa spans billions of years. The kalpa in which a Buddha appears is called a bright kalpa, while the kalpa in which no Buddha appears is called a dark kalpa. Number 1. The Past During the great kalpa of manifest joy, which was a bright kalpa, 33,000 Buddhas appeared. Following this bright kalpa, there were 100 dark kalpas in which no Buddha appeared. Then, in the perfect kalpa, 800 million Buddhas appeared, again followed by 100 dark kalpas. Afterward, 840 million Buddhas appeared during the excellent kalpa after which there were 500 dark kalpas. You can see that even though many Buddhas appeared in a bright kalpa, no Buddha appeared in the following 500 dark kalpas. Just think about how much suffering beings had to experience during those 500 kalpas. Since no Buddha appeared, those sentient beings would be lost in samsara, 
without anyone attaining wisdom. Then, in the Kalpa Delightful to See, 800 million Buddhas appeared, followed by 700 dark Kalpas. In the joyous Kalpa that followed, 60,000 Buddhas appeared. So, in total, there were five bright Kalpas and 1,400 dark Kalpas. Although many Buddhas appeared in the bright Kalpas, during so many dark Kalpas, no Buddha appeared at all. If one were to be born during those periods, they would not encounter the Dharma for a very long time. Therefore, our present human life is indeed rare and precious. Number 2. The Present After the 1,400 dark kalpas came to the end, the sixth bright kalpa, the present good kalpa, began. From Buddha Krakuchanda's coming, when human lifespan was 80,000 years, till Buddha Rudita's coming, when human lifespan was immeasurable, a total of 1,000 Buddhas will have come to the world, attained perfect enlightenment on the Vajra seat at the centre of Jambadvipa and turned the wheel of the Dharma. By checking the time when the 1,000 Buddhas appear in the good Kalpa, we will see that even in bright Kalpas, it's extremely rare to encounter a Buddha. From the first to eighth small Kalpas, no Buddha appeared. The ninth small Kalpa, when human lifespan was 80,000 years, Buddha Krakuchanda appeared as the first Buddha of the Good Kalpa. When human lifespan was 40,000 years, Buddha Kanakumuni appeared as the second Buddha of the Good Kalpa. When human lifespan was 20,000 years, Buddha Kasyapa appeared as the third Buddha of the Good Kalpa. When human lifespan was 100 years, Buddha Shakyamuni appeared as the fourth Buddha of the Good Kalpa. The tenth small Kalpa, when human lifespan is 84,000 years, Buddha Maitreya will appear. This is the next small Kalpa. Now we are at the end of the decreasing lifespan period of the ninth small culpa, and the current human lifespan is not long. When human lifespan decreases to 10 to 20 years, it will begin to increase until it reaches the highest point of 84,000 years, which is an indefinite large number. After that, it will start to decrease again, and as it just begins to decrease, Buddha Maitreya will appear. From the 11th to 14th small kalpas, no Buddha will appear. In total, there are 20 small kalpas. The 15th small kalpa, 994 Buddhas will appear one after another. The 16th to 19th small kalpas, no Buddha will appear. The last small kalpa, the 20th small kalpa, Buddha Rudita will appear as the last Buddha of the good kalpa. Among these 20 small kalpas, only four of them have Buddhas appearing, while the rest have no Buddha appearing. An intermediate kalpa consists of 20 small kalpas. A great kalpa consists of four intermediate kalpas, formation, existence, 
destruction and emptiness. Buddhas can only appear in the intermediate culpa of existence. During the intermediate culpa of formation, no Buddha appears. Even sentient beings are nowhere to be seen. Now we are in an intermediate culpa of existence, which consists of 20 small culpas, during which 1,000 Buddhas will appear. Following the intermediate culpa of existence, there will be the intermediate culpas of destruction and emptiness, during which there will be no Buddha, and not even a sentient being. A great culpa consists of four intermediate culpas, formation, existence, destruction, and emptiness, while an intermediate culpa contains 20 small culpas. So, a great culpa consists of 80 small culpas. Buddhas can only appear in the intermediate culpa of existence, but won't appear in the other three intermediate culpas. Moreover, even in this intermediate culpa of existence, Buddhas only appear in four of the small culpas. So, it takes countless years for us to encounter a Buddha. How long do we need to wait for Maitreya Bodhisattva to come? Some books say it will be 5.6 billion years later, but this number should be wrong. 5.6 billion years later, the earth will have long ceased to exist, and even the sun would have burned out, so it's impossible for a Buddha to come at that time. One by one, the eight planets have life on them. Currently, there are living beings on Earth. However, the Earth is gradually moving closer to the sun. As the Earth's temperature rises, living beings will migrate to Mars, where the temperature will be similar to Earth's current temperature. The planets are all moving closer to the sun. As the Earth completes one orbit, it gets a little closer to the sun. This is confirmed by scientists' measurements. The Earth's temperature is gradually increasing, and in many thousands of years, all life on Earth will have perished. Currently, life, after some time, no life will survive near the equator. Eventually, life can only survive at the north and south poles, while the temperature in other areas will be too high, 70 to 80 degrees, for any life to survive. In the end, the entire Earth will become uninhabitable, where no living being can survive. Living beings are migrating towards the poles. In the beginning, there were many living beings near the equator. There are three types of culpas. Small culpa, intermediate culpa, and great culpa. Every hundred years, the average human lifespan increases by one year until it reaches the maximum. Then, every hundred years, the average human lifespan decreases by one year until it reaches the minimum. This period of increase and decrease constitutes a small culpa. Now, we are in the decreasing period of the ninth small culpa of the existence intermediate culpa of the good culpa, and the current human lifespan is 100 years. The decrease begins from the time with the longest average lifespan. 
The lifespan decreases by one year every hundred years, from 84,000 years down to 10 years. 84,000 multiplied by 100 equals 8.4 million years, and when multiplied by 2, it constitutes a small culpa, which is around 16 million years. 84,000 is a very large number, but it's not precisely 84,000 years. This shows how rare it is for a Buddha to appear. We are very fortunate to have caught the last train. This Buddha's era is coming to an end. If you don't study and practice now, when will you do that? When Maitreya Buddha comes, who knows where you will be digging holes at that time? Seriously, if you don't engage in spiritual practice, you will end up like this. So, don't cling to immediate comfort. If you don't study now, it will be even more difficult in the next lifetime. If you are waiting for the advent of Maitreya Buddhasattva, only if you have cultivated your roots of virtue well, when Maitreya Buddhasattva comes, you will have the merit to learn from him. At least you should have that merit. But there is still a long time before that. Before Maitreya Buddha comes, there will be a long period without Buddha or Dharma, and you will create negative karma like everyone else, even if you have roots of virtue. To be honest, Many of you here have roots of virtue. But please recall, what did you do before you became a monastic or came to learn the Dharma? You will realize how much you have deviated from the way. There are six billion people on earth, but how many of them have heard the Dharma? They are all lost in the secular world. There are countless animals and ghosts and countless trillions of beings on earth. But among the over six billion humans, how many have the opportunity to study the Dharma? Is there one out of a thousand who study the Dharma? No. Only the Buddha's teachings show the ultimate truth of the universe. If we realize this truth, we can attain complete liberation and transcend the three realms. Not to mention transcending the three realms, at least we should know that there is a path to transcend the three realms, and this path is the only one. Only the Buddha knew it, and he had imparted it to us. The Buddha also taught us the Buddhasattva path, through which one can not only transcend the three realms, but also return to them, coming and going freely. In other words, neither coming nor going, in a free state. The Buddha's Atva path is higher than the Arhat path. The Arhat path is about transcending the three realms, while the Buddha's Atva path returns to samsara out of compassion. Buddha's Atvas come and go freely, neither coming nor going, which is a higher state. Number three, the future. After the good culpa, there will be 60 dark culpas. After that, in the culpa of vast numbers, 10,000 Buddhas will appear. After the good culpa, there will be 60 dark culpas without any Buddha appearing. And then there will be a culpa in which Buddhas appear. 
Then there will be 10,000 dark kalpas. In these 10,000 kalpas, no Buddha will appear. During these hundreds and thousands of kalpas, no Buddha appears at all. Why does it happen like this? Why doesn't the Buddha appear in those kalpas? Because the conditions are not ripe. Sentient beings have too many pleasures to enjoy, so they are not willing to engage in spiritual practice, or they are too ignorant. There are too few beings like us now who experience the mixture of suffering and happiness and have the opportunity to seek the Dharma. Hence, the Buddha cannot appear. So, what does the Buddha do during these dozens of kalpas? The Buddha is always present. Don't think that he is absent. Although the Buddha doesn't appear, he is always helping sentient beings. How does he help them? By nurturing their roots of virtue. The Buddha is actively working to nurture and accumulate their roots of virtue. After accumulating for dozens of kalpas, the conditions gradually ripen. In other words, among countless sentient beings, when the Buddha finally finds some of them who are willing to learn the Dharma and nurtures them, he will appear, holding some grand Dharma assemblies and liberating a large number of people. This is what we call the Buddha's coming. In reality, the Buddha is always present. How could he ever be absent? The Buddha is present at all times. However, if you don't have the conditions, he won't appear as a typical Buddha who goes through the eight great events and won't hold grand Dharma assemblies. It's not that the Buddha is absent. The Buddha is always present, but not necessarily in public appearance. This is hard, but if you study earnestly and don't get lost, you will be fine wherever you are in all your future lifetimes. As long as you have generated Buddha Chitta, even if no Buddha appears, you will be reborn as a person with Buddha Chitta, which will continue to support you to practice, benefit sentient beings, and guide them. Even if no Buddha appears, as long as you have Buddha Chitta, Buddhas and Buddhasattvas will guide you wherever you are. Buddhas won't necessarily come to expound the Dharma. Buddhas and Buddhasattvas are always present and never enter Nirvana. Even in hell, there are Buddhas and Buddhasattvas as long as you have the karmic connection. Even if no Buddha appears, as long as you have cultivated good roots of virtue, you won't be afraid wherever you go. If you have cultivated Buddha Chitta well, you are an heir of Buddhas, and Buddhas and Buddhasattvas will always accompany you, never leaving you till you attain Buddhahood. As long as you have generated Buddha Chitta, Buddhas and Buddhasattvas will never leave you. However, if you haven't generated Buddha Chitta, this won't be possible. Now that you have understood this truth, you should cherish your precious human life. Without vastly accumulating merits in the past, you won't obtain a precious human life in such a good time. In your past lives, you have planted roots of virtue in front of many Buddhas and accumulated vast merits, enabling you to encounter the Dharma and obtain this precious human life. 
Therefore, you should diligently learn, meditate and practice the Dharma and don't miss the opportunity to liberate yourself and others. To study the Dharma, one must obtain a precious human life. After studying the eight freedoms and ten advantages, you should review them and bear them in mind. Otherwise, if you forget, you will slack off. You may consider life long and then aimlessly spend your days and waste your time. You should seize the time to generate Buddha Chitta and then everything that you do will be easier. When you work, you are also cultivating your Buddha Chitta. You should turn everything that you do into an expression of your Buddha Chitta, which is practicing Buddha Chitta. If you have generated Buddha Chitta before doing things, your Buddha Chitta will grow. So, it's best to generate Buddha Chitta before doing anything. Then, wherever you go, you won't be afraid. Moreover, you can go to any world. Once you have generated Buddha Chitta, it won't be difficult for you to go to the Pure Land. You can go there with just one thought. You don't even need ten thoughts to go there. Just one thought is enough. Truly, I tell you, as long as you have qualified faith, aspiration and Buddha Chitta, you can go there by simply chanting Amitabha once, with a single thought, you can go there. Number two. The Buddha has preached the Dharma, the advantage of the teachings. The Buddha has preached the Dharma. If a Buddha comes but remains in meditation without expounding the Dharma, there will be no light of the Dharma, as if he has never come. For example, our great teacher, Shakyamuni Buddha, after attaining a perfect and complete enlightenment under the Bodhi tree in India, said, I have found the Dharma like Ambrosia, profound, peaceful, transcendent, radiant, and uncompounded. If I expound it, no one will understand. So I shall remain silent here in the forest. Afterward, for seven weeks, he did not impart teachings until Brahma and Indra implored him to turn the wheel of the Dharma. When Shakyamuni Buddha attained enlightenment, he said, the Dharma is so profound that even if I expound it, no one will understand. So I shall remain silent in the forest without teaching. Why didn't he expound the Dharma? Because the Dharma is profound. This is a manifestation telling people how precious and profound the Dharma is, which needs to be requested. Brahma and Indra implored the Buddha to turn the wheel of Dharma. Why didn't the Buddha turn it? Because it requires conditions. Not to mention the Buddha turning the wheel of Dharma, even for me to come to Beijing and impart a few teachings, it requires profound conditions. Furthermore, if those who hold the Dharma don't expound it, it's difficult to directly benefit sentient beings. For example, Venerable Smirta Jhana from India, in order to save his mother, who had been reborn in an ephemeral hell, set out for Tibet. However, after his translator died on the journey, he wandered in calm region. 
Unable to speak the language, he became a shepherd and eventually passed away without vastly benefiting beings with the Dharma. Later, when Venerable Atisha arrived in Tibet and heard of this, he cried out, How sad! Tibetans, your merit is so shallow! Among the Panditas in India, East or West, no one can surpass Smitijana. He joined his palms and wept. Now, the Buddha Shakyamuni has turned the wheel of the Dharma on three levels and manifested inconceivable forms according to the capacities of sentient beings, maturing and liberating them through the nine vehicles of his teachings. Among the great teachers of the past, many did not turn the wheel of the Dharma due to the lack of conditions. Nobody requested them to teach, or, as in this story, there was no translator. Thus, nobody could understand their language. In these situations, although the Buddha has come to the world, he did not teach. Number three. The Buddha's teachings still exist. The advantage of the time. Although the Buddha has turned the wheel of the Dharma three times, if the Dharma has already vanished, after a few thousand years, the Dharma will disappear. Now, the Dharma is still available. Currently, it should be the beginning of the Dharma ending age. We haven't reached the terrible era of the final 500 years yet, when people can only chant Amitabha Buddha, but nobody understands the Dharma. There are still many Buddhasattvas preaching the Dharma in the world, so we are not that miserable, only having the option of chanting Amitabha Buddha. But eventually, that era when only Amitabha Sutras and the chanting of Amitabha Buddha are left, will come. At that time, nobody will understand the Dharma. Yet, there will still be very few people who believe in Buddhism. They may not know what to chant, but they know Amitabha Buddha and the existence of the Pure Land. With this little merit, they can still go there. That will be the final era during which no one preaches the Dharma. Now there are still teachers preaching the Dharma. If the Dharma disappears and the fruit period, transmission period and symbol period are all complete, it would not benefit sentient beings. This is just like a school. Although it once enrolled students, it now has closed and stopped accepting students. Thus, children cannot benefit anymore. Now, the Buddha's teachings still exist, so we have the advantage of the time. Number four. The Dharma can still be followed. The advantage of one's own condition. Although the Buddha has appeared, preached the Dharma, and the Dharma still exists, if one hasn't taken refuge in Buddhism, it won't be of any benefit. Now we have already embraced Buddhism. Regardless of our initial intentions, we will eventually understand the meaning of the Dharma. Therefore, our own conditions are complete, referred to as the Dharma can still be followed. Number 5. Being accepted by a qualified teacher. The advantage of a compassionate teacher. Even if the first four conditions are met. 
All these conditions are indispensable. If one's own condition, as well as the first four conditions, are met, but one only takes refuge superficially, though they may think they have taken refuge in the three jewels and become a Buddhist. The Sangha is a community rather than an individual. Many people have become a Buddhist for several years, but they don't understand anything. They may know how to bow and offer incense, but they haven't kept the five precepts, let alone understand deeper teachings. They don't understand the truth of suffering, haven't heard about the truth of suffering, the suffering of change and the pervasive suffering. So, they are not qualified either. If one has the first four advantages and has taken refuge in Buddhism but tries to study on their own by reading a book, they will also run into problems. Over time, they may be influenced by devils without realising it, believing that they are on the right path. If one only takes refuge superficially without being guided by a qualified teacher, one will remain ignorant of the essence of the Dharma. Now that we are fortunate to be accepted by a compassionate teacher, we have the advantage of a compassionate teacher also known as being accepted by a qualified teacher. Why are these conditions called circumstantial advantages? Because they depend on external factors. Now that you have all these advantages, you should cherish, rejoice and be diligent. The five individual advantages and the five circumstantial advantages are all indispensable. If any one of them is absent, you will not be able to study Buddhism. Even if you have all the five circumstantial advantages, including being accepted by a qualified teacher, if your sense faculties are incomplete, or if your lifestyle conflicts with your Dharma practice, you still cannot learn the Dharma. The Degenerate Age of Five Defilements Number 1. Defilement of the Error this refers to the error with frequent disasters and misfortune. Many disasters occur, and future disasters will be very severe and frequent. The pollution is too severe. Nowadays, Chinese people are creating too much negative karma. That's why disasters occur frequently. Number 2 defilement of sentient beings. This means that sentient beings have inferior qualities and decreasing merits and experience more suffering than happiness. Nowadays, beings' merits are rapidly decreasing, especially in the last two to three decades, so it's hard to say whether science is good or bad. Number 3. Defilement of Lifespan This means that sentient beings experience shortened lifespans due to creating negative karma. The lifespan is uncertain, so it's called the defilement of lifespan. Number 4. Defilement of Views this refers to the decline of virtues among monastics. Now, in the Dharma ending age, even among monastics, it's hard to find those who practice and guide sentient beings with right understanding and views. 
I'm not saying there is none, but the number is decreasing. In the Dharma ending age, even among monastics, there are very few with right understanding and views. Many people blindly believe in causality, cling to fame and fortune, and enjoy worldly activities without earnestly engaging in Dharma practice. Even when it comes to Dharma practice, they don't practice the path of liberation or the Buddhasattva path. At most, they practice the path of the human and heavenly realms. Nowadays, those who abandon evil and practice the path of the human and heavenly realms are already considered good monastics. This is the situation in the Dharma ending age. The Dharma has declined, leading to the defilement of views. Disputes over views arise and there's no standard. In the past, there were many great teachers who collectively established a standard of right understanding and views. Wherever they went, they supported each other, fostering a good Dharma atmosphere. Wherever a student went, they could always learn right understanding and views, as the views were consistent in different places. Nowadays, this is rare. One group may explain something in this way, while another group may interpret it differently, causing confusion. Many views are mixed together, making it difficult to discern which one is right. Since there are too many wrong views, it's hard for lay people to discern the right view. This is what is meant by the defilement of views. Number 5. Defilement of Afflictions This refers to the gradual decline of virtuous deeds among lay people. Regardless of their beliefs, lay people are often bound by mental afflictions or disorders. Nowadays, many people suffer from mental disorders, and every individual may experience them at some point in their lives. Most people can recover from mental disorders, just like recovering from physical illnesses. However, some of them cannot recover, and that would be terrifying. Both the external world and the minds of ordinary beings are filled with greed, anger and ignorance. Although we are in the degenerate age of the five defilements, the Buddha's teachings still exist and the Dharma of transmission and realization hasn't vanished. Since we have such a precious opportunity, we should practice virtuous deeds. In fact, anyone who dedicates their time can practice virtuous deeds. If you don't understand the degenerate age of five defilements, you won't feel urgent. Some people are just aimlessly passing their time and creating worldly karma. Simply put, due to the strong karma of ordinary beings, even if they realize their mistakes, they don't want to change. Happiness is the hardest to endure. When delicious food is served, your mouth waters. It's very difficult to resist. Suffering can be endured, because even if you don't want to endure it, you have to. But it's very hard to resist happiness, and that's why the practice of Buddhism is not easy. For you who have been living in the secular world for a long time, it's best to start by practicing asceticism to deal with your karmic habits. Your karmic habits are too strong. To remove the habitual attachment to the five desires, 
the best way is to practice asceticism. Why become a monastic? Becoming a monastic means letting go of all worldly wealth and fame and practicing asceticism to deal with karmic habits. If you don't deal with your karmic habits, you won't eliminate them. How can you eliminate them? And if you don't eliminate them, you will experience greater suffering later on, a thousand or ten thousand times greater than your current happiness. This is the reality. Do you want to attain liberation? We have been studying here for several years, teaching you every day how to cultivate renunciation and generate buddhacitta. Merely talking about the wisdom of emptiness is ineffective. You need to start by disciplining yourself with precepts. Merely saying, I understand emptiness, without wanting to observe precepts, won't work. Karma is too powerful. The main problem is that you haven't realized how powerful karma is. For countless kalpas, we have been trapped in samsara, and the karma we have accumulated is not just as thick as three feet of ice. It's even thicker than 3,000 feet. So, it takes time to melt them away. Do you think you can attain enlightenment without renouncing worldly life? It's impossible. Even Buddhas and Buddhasattvas from ten directions have renounced worldly life countless times before gradually practicing the Buddhasattva path staying in impure environments, yet remaining pure.